Hey everybody, it's Lavender Town, and today I'm going to be reviewing this hilariously tiny drawing tablet that I found on Amazon. And I know, I know, my hair is not looking super pink right now. I'm going to dye it tomorrow, so don't you worry. So this video started with a hunt for the cheapest tablet that money can buy, and I found this one. It's $21.24, and I got it with free shipping, so it was very cheap. It has a respectable four stars, but I was pretty skeptical when I bought this. Um, so when I opened it up, I could not believe how tiny this tablet actually is. It's barely bigger than, uh, it's like a post-it note and a half, um, and I'll show it compared to my other tablets in a second. It, of course, had the pen, um, which was in the same mint and white colorway that I picked out. I thought that was actually pretty cute. And then underneath it, there's the driver on a disc. There's also some loose extra nibs in a little plastic baggie, the cord, of course, that you need to plug it in with and then user manuals for Windows and Mac. Um, I had a few problems right off the bat, but I'll tell you about that in a second. So first off, I want to show you the difference in the active area of this tablet versus other tablets that I use. The active area just refers to the area you can actually draw in. Every tablet has plasticky borders that you can't actually draw on, so you need to make sure that the active area is actually big enough for you to work with. And as you can see, I've done a little red line around the active area of my Cintiq and the active area of this tablet, and you can see that it's a pretty significant difference in the amount of drawing real estate that you get. However, that is to be expected with a price difference of this much. So now it's time to find out if Spoiled Me can work with this very small amount of space when I'm used to so much extra. I should also mention that the pen on this tablet is quite a bit thicker than the pen that came with my Cintiq and the pen that I use with my Intuos. Um, it also has a battery inside of it and the eraser does not work as an eraser, it actually works as a way to turn the pen on and off. Okay, so now I'm actually gonna test it out and I speed lapse this, but not quite as much as I usually do. I only sped it up four times so you guys can kind of get a sense of what it was like to draw with. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about the problems and the pluses that I found with this extremely cheap tablet. The first thing I want to talk about is just the sort of silly issues I had with it taking it straight out of the box. It's not completely foolproof and I definitely had some um, silly sort of problems with it right away. So the first problem I had with it is I'm not accustomed to pens that need batteries. Wacom pens typically don't need batteries of any kind and that's why they're so thin. Um, this one did need a battery and didn't come with it. Uh, so I didn't realize um, what the problem was, why it wasn't working. When I plugged it in. I installed the drivers three times before I thought to check to see the inside of the pen to see if it needed batteries. Um, so yeah, there was no battery inside and it needed a AAA battery. So once I got that in there and the driver was installed, it worked normally and it didn't um, have any clashes with my currently existing drivers, which I was very concerned about because I've used lots of different tablets with this computer and sometimes those can interact in negative ways but it didn't in this case which was good. The setup on this thing was pretty easy. I didn't use the disk because I don't actually have a disk drive in my laptop so I just searched for the latest driver by googling the name of the driver and downloading the Mac version and um, then obviously just plugging it in figuring out the battery problem and then a little preference panel popped up and I was able to very quickly program the two buttons on my pen to be a right click and a control Z for undo. That was very easy to do and I was pleasantly surprised by that. It's a pretty bare bones preferences thing because there's really only two buttons to program but it worked like a charm. It didn't give me any trouble so that's a pro. Some of the cons I want to discuss right away are the pressure sensitivity. It is pretty abysmal and um, you can see that I'm really struggling with keeping my lines sort of anywhere that's not like super thick or super thin. Uh, it's hard to get to the medium spot with this particular tablet. So what you can do to work around that if this is the only kind of tablet that's in your price range um, is to either make your pen roughly the size you want your line art to be and generally press down pretty hard or you can also just sort of embrace this like 
kind of rough style. Um, it's not ugly, I don't think. It's not a huge problem. And uh, you can probably get the hang of it pretty quickly. By the end of this inking, I was already feeling like I had a better idea of how to handle the pressure sensitivity. So take this with a grain of salt. I mean, I'm used to different pressure, pressure sensitivity, so maybe I'm just um, too attached to the way that I'm used to it, and it's not actually that bad. I would just say that it definitely doesn't have as many sort of levels in between, like a thick thick, thick line and a super thin one. Um, so it felt like it was jumping around a lot for me. This next point is not actually a pro. It's more like the opposite of a con, but I was surprised by how little I was bothered by how little this is. I expected the size to be the biggest problem with this tablet and it actually wasn't. The main reason it wasn't a big problem was that it's actually so thin that I am not bothered when my hand is sort of falling off the edge of it. And even that didn't happen too much because the active area is so centered inside of the tablet. So usually my hand was supported by that bluish sort of area on the outside. Um, that is the biggest problem that you can have when you're drawing. I definitely know that, you know, because I'm left-handed and stuff, when my hand hits the spiral on a little spiral, uh, drawing like pad it drives me insane I didn't have any of that problem with this tablet which I was really glad about I expected it to be sort of a nightmare to be honest um, and I was surprised it was not as bad as I thought it would be and um, that does mean that because of the small size um, I can carry it around anywhere which is pretty great my tablets are pretty fragile and heavy duty and they're quite large so I don't usually like to travel around with them too much. I obviously bring them when I have to go on a trip or something but I would never like take them to a coffee shop, at least probably not unless I had the right case for them and everything like that. You definitely don't want your expensive technology getting busted up and um, when it's super heavy you just don't want to take it with you as much. So uh, if you're someone who likes to sketch at coffee shops a lot and you have a light laptop or something this might actually be a really good pick for you. Uh, I definitely wouldn't recommend it if you have to do very meticulous detail work for any reason. Like if you're the type of artist who likes to draw like lace and little tiny details, I think you could do it with this tablet. But because of the issues that I talked about with the pressure sensitivity, um, I did feel a bit like I was losing a lot of control over um, where I was drawing and what I was drawing. I think that was the main thing that I did have trouble with in regard to the size because basically every little movement you make with your hand sort of whips the cursor across the screen because you are dealing with such a small area. Um, like I said, I felt like I got adapted to it pretty quickly, but then again, I did end up drawing something that's very comfortable for me. Um, it's a very easy thing to draw. I think that if I was drawing something challenging, like a detailed background or a really detailed outfit, anything like that, I would have a bit of trouble. And I will say that the time when I had the most discomfort with this tablet was actually when I was sketching, which is rare for me, but I think it's because the, um, the sort of hovering that this tablet can do is a little bit weaker than I'm used to and just because of that really wild pressure sensitivity I can't like smack my pen down really crazy and have a perfect sort of pencil line show up instead it's sort of like this blobby um, super thin to super thick line which looks a little weird when I'm sketching so um, keeping that in mind I do think that this tablet is surprisingly good considering it is only $21 in comparison my Intuos I believe was around 300 when we bought it and my Cintiq was around it was over a thousand dollars so uh, for $21 it's hard to even compare these these this equipment because it is such a difference in the price but I would say and this was the thing I was trying to figure out when I started this video I would say that if you're an absolute beginner and you don't have the money for an expensive tablet I would say that this will work for you and really all you need is for it to work when you're first starting out now if you really take to digital art and you really love it I would recommend saving up for something a little bit more um, refined and expensive and stuff because you do get what you pay for in a lot of ways but I think that this would be a great starter tablet if you're someone who's not sure if you want to invest a lot of money into doing digital art if you're a traditional artist and you're first you know starting into this whole field or it would be a great gift if you're someone who knows someone who's young but wants to start digital art it's just not it's not too big of an investment where there's a lot of pressure on it and I think that that's really important because um 
I worry about young artists who feel like they need to spend hundreds of dollars to start doing digital art. I really don't want digital art to seem that um, bourgeois and inaccessible. So just to finish up, I'm gonna show what this ended up looking like and I'm gonna strip away the color layer so that you can really see what the line art ended up looking like. So it isn't too crazy different from my usual line art. I definitely think it's a little bit sloppier looking and definitely the tapers on the end of the lines are a little bit less refined than I prefer, but it definitely wasn't torturous. It wasn't a super hard challenge to work with. Um, and yeah, it's basically up to you and your budget uh, depending on whether this tablet would work for you. It's definitely better than no tablet, I'll say that for sure. Working with a mouse is the worst. Um, so if you're someone who's wanting to do digital art and you don't want severe carpal tunnel in your hand from using a mouse, I would recommend using this tablet. Um, it's not sponsored, of course. I bought this with my own money and I definitely think there's a lot of problems with it. But um, if that is something you're interested in, I'll try to remember to drop a link in the description so you can check it out if you would like. I hope this was helpful to you guys. I remember not feeling like I could ever do digital art because I thought drawing tablets were always so expensive. So if you're in the same situation, I really hope that it was helpful to you. And I will see you guys next week. Thank you to all of my patrons, including Scott Peterson, Christy Stewart, Painamel, The Artsy Moose, Elizabeth Alvin, Count Pompon, Trasho Maniac, Mycodactyl, Okamore, Matthew Kunke, Blep, Sergeant Pendulum, Shiori, Lena Christine, De Sweet 12, He Was, Taka, Lovely, Lachlan MD, Mystic, Enzo Jobort, Yoboy ST, JJ Jade, Blah 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 Blah, and Addy Visual.